try recording this again. This is my third try. This time hopefully you'll be able to see everything and there won't be too many weird noises and you can hear me well. Hopefully. I'll try it. Okay, today this is a video version of my The Wise Turtle Speaks podcast because someone donated a lovely, slightly broken, but uh, fairly useful, fancy smartphone that has video and all kinds of capabilities. So anyway, so today uh, I figured I'd do a little, a little visual description and uh, a nice definition of a simple topic, nothing fancier than what is life. Uh, today I'm going to fairly succinctly and easily explain like I'm five what life is. Um, this way we can move on from there and discuss other things without saying, uh, getting into discussions about, well, can you even define life? I'm going to say yes, and here we go. Okay, this is a general definition. Now, there's three basic things to life. The first one is inputs. Something has to be able to take in inputs of sensory information, matter, energy, whatever it is. The second part is that it has to reorganize that information, recombine it in a new way, a novel way. And then the third part is outputs, and that we call procreation. Now, I'm not talking about just physical genetic procreation, of course. I'm talking about mimetic, ideological procreation of new ideas, new information, new emotions, artwork, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, so these three things. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little diagram that I, I drew in the last video, uh, but I don't want to draw it again, so here it is. All right, this is my little video. Hopefully, the screen can see it, and um, hopefully it's not too out of focus. So here are the inputs. You take in information. Uh, this can be, or matter. It can be either matter or energy, any kind of pattern. You take in a pattern, and these are all little, my little drawings of different patterns. So you take in some kind of pattern inside the organism. And an, or an organism can be anything, any kind of system, any kind of structured container. Um, we're not talking about biological things necessarily. We're talking about a, a structure that can be made up of anything. This is a very generic description of life, which is why we can include artificial life, because artificial life is not biological. That's, that's the definition of it. <laughs> So the, the organism is some kind of container that allows things to, to stay stable, fairly stable. You know, we don't have a good specific definition. There's no absolute threshold, but you know, in general, more than 50% of the thing probably has to stay stable over some time period for something to be alive. If, if it's less than that, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be a little awkward with it. We're not gonna be too comfortable with calling it life. Or at least not for very long. Um, but th some things live for a very short period of time, so, you know, as long as it's most of it's stable for you know, any period of time, we call it life. So anyway, so this, this pattern of energy matter goes into a system through the senses, through any kind of structural, you know, mouth, eyes, nose, absorbs through the skin, whatever. It goes into the system. And then as it goes into the system, it starts breaking up into multiple pieces. It gets being taken apart. This pattern that went into it gets taken apart and messed around with. And that's what an organism does. That's what, you know, life does even when it's not procreating. Before it procreates, it has to take in this information and reorganize it. You know, the, the, the beautiful scenery is going into my eyes and it's getting recombined with the patterns that I've previously seen before. And it's saying, oh, yes, I recognize that thing. I recognize that stuff out there. That's water. And I recognize those things off in the distance. There's some trees and houses. Those are the information, that's, the patterns that are coming in from out there, going into my eyes, are being compared to the patterns that I've already seen before and so that's what this stuff is getting taken apart. It's going all around the system and it's getting recombined 
put other stuff in the system. And then that's mostly alive. A system that can take in information and recombine it, you know, we would say it's mostly alive, but if it's not ever outputting anything, it's not ever procreating, then we might not say it's life. So we add in this little extra bit that we, we need to observe something, we need to experience something that is also putting this new stuff out into the universe. This system has to output a new pattern, but not just any old pattern. It has to be a pattern that's a copy of itself, a copy of something that it has reorganized into itself. So if it's just spitting out random stuff, um, you know, if it's a funnel and it's taking stuff in and it's spinning it around and then spitting it out, that's not life because it's not spitting out a copy of something that's inside it. And that's the tricky point. This copy, I don't know if you can see in this diagram, I have literally copied and output one of the little squiggles that I drew in my drawing. So, you know, I organized something in my head. So I looked out here and I saw this, this water or these leaves and the pylons or whatever those things are over there, the, little, the, the things that are not holding up a, uh, a platform for a dock that used to be a dock, so it's whatever the structural dock bits that aren't a dock. Uh, you know, I look at those and I take them in my, inside my head. Now, I could output those things as an, a drawing. I could take paint. I could take, um, I could take a bunch of pieces of leaf and reorganize them in the same pattern that I saw, or you know, basically the same pattern. I could, I could, you know, set up a whole bunch of little things that are, you know, stacked in the same way, and then I could make art with that. That would be art. That would be expressing a pattern that I've got inside my head, but combining it in a new way with this art expression, and then outputting it. That would be procreation, and that would be the definition of life. I had all those three elements involved. And now this is something that even little kids pretty much understand. Um, they may not fully understand the idea of procreation, of making that copy of something inside and then putting it out into the universe, whether it's genetic, or mimetic, artistic, ideological, cultural, whatever, um, an expression that copies. The kids may not fully understand that, but even little kids can usually tell you the difference between a photocopier, which is literally just making copies. It is not reorganizing those things. It is not taking in information and generating new information and spitting it out. It is just taking in information and spitting it out. So even little kids understand most of this concept. I think it's probably an innate understanding of what life is, even if we can't fully explain it or, you know, I'm trying to fully explain it, or I'm trying to fairly succinctly explain it, but um, even little children who couldn't explain why something isn't alive probably do understand this. Um, I, I did a little experiment with little kids when I was a preschool teacher. Um, I took little, little, uh, like, it, hi, my name is kind of sticker things, and I said, uh, please be gentle with me, I'm alive. And we wandered around the, the preschool and outside a little bit and stuck them on things that were alive. And the kids fully grasped it. You know, they never put anything, they never put any I'm alive stickers on things that weren't alive. And they never put any, um, and they, they, they didn't miss any. Even the plants they understood were alive. And, you know, obviously we kind of have to explain that a little bit because some of these things aren't fully understandable, like a photocopier is hard to tell the difference between a photocopier and what we might call artificial life, even if we don't necessarily know if we have it or not. Um, for example, we're not entirely sure if a self-driving car would be considered artificial life. It's right on the edge. It's certainly taking in information and generating some kind of new information, whether it's a copy of what's inside itself it's hard to say. We would have to get into actually looking at what it's doing. Uh, the same thing with like IBM's Watson that was on Jeopardy, that actually won Jeopardy against human competitors. Um, 
we're not entirely sure what it's doing. So we would really have to look at what's going on inside and what's being generated to, to make this distinction. But at least we can have this definition of what is light. And now whether or not we give rights, more rights to things that are alive, then, or more consideration, or more protection, or more, you know, just generosity and compassion. Uh, you know, that's a different category, but it's another topic which I will probably cover. I probably already, already have. Um, but in general, the basic thing is that most people care naturally innately care less about you know this rock if I came and you know if I came and punched this rock you know if I hit that rock really hard smacked it I smacked that rock bad rock no it's not a bad rock it's a lovely rock all rocks are lovely all human beings are lovely and just sometimes do things that we're uncomfortable with like this rock if I had to sit on this rock for much longer I would be uncomfortable because it is cold and it is hard um, but if I if I smack this rock Nobody is going to be upset. You know, the only thing that's upset is my hand because it hurt when I smacked it. Um, and why is that? Is it because it's not alive? I mean, it is very clearly, as far as we can tell, not alive. Um, so we we generally have less interest in protecting the the structure. Okay, here's another one. Here's a here's a an edgy thing. Okay, this thing is. Is it alive? Is it not alive? It's a leaf. So it is technically coming from something that's biological. So it had the potential for life. And if you listen to, uh, when is the strawberry dead? Anyone who listens to uh, Brian Cox and the Infinite Monkey Cage uh, British podcast radio show will, uh, will enjoy this. Um, is this leaf dead or alive? Well. It's not satisfying this, is it? There's, there, it? It doesn't have any sensory inputs into it. There possibly might be some cells in here that are still alive. Um, possibly, I, I'm not sure. Uh, especially in the stem, uh, they're more likely to stay alive. But um, So there might be some cells in here that are still alive and that are still taking in uh, photosynthesis, light, whatever, um, water. And doing something with it, processing it in some way, and then outputting something new. Maybe not. The leaf itself, however, as an organism, as a, as a structure itself, is not. This leaf is not generating anything new. Um, it's not taking in information, processing it, and outputting anything the way a tree does. Um, so, if I come up here and go like this, to this leaf, and then scatter it off into the wind. Is anyone going to be upset about that? Probably not. Other than the fact that it was a very lovely design. Um, the fact is, I'm not harming the leaf. It is not going to be suddenly incapable of reproducing if I rip it up. Because it is mostly dead, the leaf itself is not alive. The tree, on the other hand, if I cut down the tree, I completely eliminate the possibility for it reproducing new trees, new copies of itself. That some people get upset about. So there we have a borderline. A borderline between things that are alive and things that are not alive. We care less about the, the ability of an inanimate object. And by inanimate I don't mean not moving. I mean this water is very clearly moving. Um, you can hear it, I can see it, there are waves, it is moving, it's, it's animate, but it's still an animate object, inanimate object, because it is not alive. Of course, this is English, we have to be very messy about these things. <laughs> Living things don't necessarily mean they're animated or not animated, and inanimate doesn't necessarily mean they're alive or not. Um, but that borderline between animate and inanimate is something that I think is instinctive and I think that at least to some extent once we know what something is doing, we will have a better understanding of whether or not we want to grant it more 
respect, rights, compassion, whatever word you want to use, to allowing it to do what it intends to do. Now, I can hit this rock and it can, it'll still do what it intends to do. <laughs> I'm not stopping it from being the rock by hitting it. Whereas if I hit a human being, I might be stopping it from doing what it wants to do. Same thing with a worm. If I hit a worm, I might be stopping it from doing what it wants to do, from procreating uh, in the way that it makes sense for it to do so. So anyway, um, I've rambled on about that for long enough, I guess I will end. And if you have any comments, um, if you like this definition of an organism that takes in information and takes in patterns, matter or energy, information or materials, uh, takes in patterns and reorganizes them in a new way, creatively, you know, combining them with old stuff, and then reproduces parts of those patterns outside itself. Now, and again, remember, this is has nothing to do with whether it's biological I mean it could even be purely numeric we could we could there could be a, an equation that is alive that we could say it, it reproduces patterns of itself um, I'm not sure how that would work but why not so what do you think of this puts takes in patterns reorganizes those patterns and spits out copies of those patterns. Not 100% unless it's a clone, but you know, spits out some, some portion of itself, of its internal structure, and then outputs it as a procreative thing. Um, I would love to hear comments. If you want to email me, my email is thewiseturtle at gmail.com. And my blog you can access by going to turl.org. That's T U R I L.org. You can also see me at Reddit where I comment as often as I can get onto the internet. And I'm turl, T U R I L, on Reddit. So if you go to www.reddit.com slash user, U S E R, slash T U R I L. You will find everything that I post, and if you want to specifically just follow my holistic enchilada community, you can look for that there as well. It's holistic as in the whole enchilada, H W H O L E I S T I C enchilada. All right, well, thank you for listening, and uh, namaste.